Well, hello, kindred spirits. Thank you again for joining me. And if this is your first time here, I'm Linda Smith Davis, and this is my channel, New England Fine Living. And this is where I hope to inspire others to find their own version of fine living, no matter how simple or grand that may be, no matter where they live, by just kind of showing things that I do during our weekly life. And this week is no different. So I'm going to show you a few things that I did during the week such as putting together a, a little bit of an appetizer to go to a girlfriend's house for a ladies night out. We're going to put together some flowers that were for perennials and annuals that we bought for outside. We're going to go for a walk at the beach and then I'm also going to take you a little shopping and then a walk around Concord Mass. Let's do that right now. Let's take a little walk first.
I don't know if some of you remember these cute little rubber boots I picked up last year at a consignment shop and I used them for flowers. Well, I'm going to do the same thing this year. I have just a few tulips left that are just almost going to their passing phase. I cut them down, they were in this larger vase and I decided I'm going to put them in the boots and I'm just gonna grab something here. Another one of my, whoops, another one of my consignment finds was this little frog. Somebody mentioned that it was for potpourri. That could be, I'm gonna use it as a frog. So I'm gonna stick this right inside the boot, add a little water, cut down some of these tulips and then make just a little spring arrangement with this. All right, I'm just gonna take these sweet little boots. I'm just gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do one of them. So I'm gonna just pop this inside. Push it down just a bit so that the stems can stay kind of long. I'm gonna put the top in. that orange flower together with the other ones for now. <laughs> Here's another thing I'm going to do. I picked up some flowers for outside summer annual summer perennials, but I'm going to keep them in the kitchen and the porch for now until it's time to put them outside. These little pansies. I'm going to put them in this basket that I was using for flatware at one point. I'm going to put some tin foil at the bottom. Then I'm going to put in these freshly watered pansies and use them as part of my Easter table setting display. And then, like I said, they'll go outside once it's time. This will help keep the water in when I lightly water them. I can also always take them out when I'm watering. And I think I'm gonna just use these little light purple periwinkle colored ones. Actually, I'm gonna do some of the purple because I don't have enough. simple as this, right? And then I have some others to use in another display. do something else with these. I'm going to do the same with some larger plants. Let me show you what I have over here. I picked some other plants up. Loving the ranunculus. These, oops, my finger always does that, see? Oop. The ranunculus will be planted outside after I enjoy them here for Easter. I picked up some purple tulips, some purple hyacinth, and I just really love the colors here. 
I have no idea how I'm gonna put these in together yet, so I'm just gonna play. I might need some risers. Maybe not. I'll trim off these yellow leaves once I have everything placed. here. I'm still going to put a few more things in here, but remember this is mainly to keep plants ready to go outside, but I'm taking that little extra step, a little extra touch of fine living by putting it in a pretty basket to enjoy while it's inside, staying nice and warm. I don't have any moss or anything. This was an impromptu decision to make this this morning, but I do have some wood eggs. So I'm just gonna tuck these in around the edges just to give it a little bit more of a finished look. And when I water it, I'll just be a little careful not to get the eggs. But now it says, oops, that one fell right through. But now this says Easter. What I'm just trying to do is kind of hide the plastic containers. Hmm. Trying to be too careful, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna need some on this side too. Once again, I've got a lot of these. I'm just gonna put them in here. And I like the blue ones, I think that's fun. Here we go. Super, super fast centerpiece. Actually, three centerpieces, however you wanna use them. And what I like is these are all gonna come back every year. On this particular night, I am heading out to a friend's house for a ladies night out and I decided to bring a cheese cracker fruit platter and I am making fried cheese medallions and it is so easy. Take some time, but it's very easy. So what I did is I popped a log of goat cheese into the freezer and I let it sit there for several hours so that I could then cut it. It is a lot easier to cut the logs with either, like this is a wire from a cheese cutter that I had. You can even use unflavored dental floss and that will work just as good. And then I'm putting it back in the little trays and popping it back into the freezer so that they will be nice and cold to then go to the next step of dipping them into the batter. And here comes the tedious, somewhat messy part. You're going to dip them in flour, shake off the excess, dip it in the eggs, then the panko. If it doesn't coat completely, do the step again. You just don't want the cheese to ooze out while it's in the oil frying. In between, I popped them in the freezer and I went to do my makeup. 15 or 20 minutes later, I took them out and then I popped them in some canola oil that's been heating up to fry. Now please be very careful with the canola oil. I did put this in a deep pan just to be a little safer. Well, if you can hear them sizzling away now, they're almost ready to take out. I have my mitt on because I don't want to get any splatter on my wrists, so, because I'm a big baby and I want to be extra careful. It's golden brown and they're ready to take out. This looks wonderful. This is the only one so far that broke apart. Here's my timer to shut off the oil. 
As for the rest of the delicious items, I decided to put things in a basket versus on a breadboard or a cutting board. Just for the fact that I will be traveling, it will travel a lot easier and things won't slide out. So I first started to play with something that would go inside and I really loved how it fit, but I want the food to take center stage. So I ended up putting down a bunch of crumpled parchment paper and then I'm gonna place in some of my iron stone dishware and then I'm going to place all my cheeses and fruits and crackers and go from there. And you'll notice I am not going for neat. I'm not going for pretty. I am going for just putting a layer under the basket. And the reason I'm crumpling it is it just moves around a lot easier because you'll see that I start to move and meld it once I am placing a lot of the items into the basket. This is just the base. I have some dried apricots here. I'm putting in some sugar dried pineapple. I'll put grapes and strawberries and then my cheeses and just gonna start building this as I go. Now it's time for some cheese and I added this cheddar that has some black truffle. I cubed it and I did put some little toothpicks in there for part of this platter and then I'm going to follow up with some other cheeses such as a brie and then some cheddar and some other cheeses and then of course the medallions. Well I have a big old mess here in the kitchen. I'm going to quickly clean up. I'm going to finish putting together the, the basket. I'm gonna put the, the fried goat cheese medallions on here. Also with honey, if your honey gets hardened, you can pop it in the microwave for about 20 seconds and it's good as new. This lasts forever. So I'm gonna bring some honey in a little container for the top of the medallions and also for the walnuts. Okay, I'm ready to roll. I'm gonna leave these vented a bit so they don't get soggy. And once again, snow, sleet, rain. This happened the last time we had to get together. This time more ladies are showing up though. The next morning, Ben and I decided to head to the coast with Willow to enjoy some fresh air. And I made some sandwiches, packed up some fruit, and I could have put it just in a bag, but once again, I'm taking that little extra step to just get a little dose of fine living. I grabbed one of the little picnic baskets that I have to put the items in and it fit perfectly right behind the car seat. And it was a lot of fun pulling it out and enjoying our little treat during the drive. We first ended up in Ipswich, Mass, which Ben and I both have ancestors in this town and also in Essex where we go next to do a little shopping. But right now I'm going to take you down to one of the beaches and just a little tidbit of information. 
Ipswich, Mass has one of the largest numbers of first period homes that are still standing in the country. And I was told in the past when I used to live in Ipswich, the people didn't have money to pull down the houses or to remodel them in this old fishing town. So they left the homes as they were, and now they still stand as they were other than with updating Memorial Day through Labor Day. Whoa, I feel on Willow. 